welcome to season two of the Thrill of Driving tutorial series where we teach you advanced driving techniques so that you can extract even more of the potential of your car. This is going to be a three-part series. We're going to start with how to launch a car, a car with a manual gearbox so that you can extract the best zero to 100 time out of it, how to use the brakes, then progress to how to use the handbrake, how to drift obviously, and finally, we're going to hit the dirt tracks and teach you how to slide a car on dirt. It is going to be a lot of fun, but we're also going to give you tips and tricks. In this video, we will be teaching you how to use the handbrake and pull off cool handbrake turns. But first, we will start with the basics. Today, we are in the Turbo Sport, the latest addition to the XUV300 range which features a sporty 1.2-litre turbo GDI engine putting out a solid 128 bhp, the most powerful SUV in its class. It also gets a manual transmission, adding to the involvement in the driving experience something its TGDI rivals do not have. It continues with the XUV300 sorted ride and handling balance and with this new powertrain becomes the most enthusiast focused compact SUV on the market. And it has motorsport pedigree. With God of Gil behind the wheel, the XUV300 has dominated rally tracks and the rallies that it has won, it has won by a country mile, establishing its superiority over the competition. Now, of course, these tips can be used on the road, on the racetrack, on the rally track, but I have to point out, do not try this on a public road. Do it on a closed off road or better still, at a racetrack or even at a go-karting track. And the point that I want to make is that you don't have to be in a big city to get access to tracks like this. We are in Kolhapur at the Mohite Racing Academy and smaller towns and cities also have great go-karting tracks. In fact, the circuit owners are even more cooperative, even more enthusiastic. And now, let's get going. But before that, don't forget to hit that like button, smash that bell icon to stay notified for our video drops. We have two more videos coming up and it is going to be a lot of fun. We start this tutorial with how to launch a car, how to get the best 0 to 100, the best 0 to 60 time. And why is this critical? Well, the faster you are to 60 to 100, the further ahead of the competition you are. Now, how do you launch a car? What we've got is a manual gearbox and all of us enthusiasts, we love manual gearboxes. Now today with the proliferation of automatic transmissions, it's actually very simple. You put the gear lever into drive, left foot on the brake, right foot on the gas, floor the throttle, just release the brake and you get the best 0 to 100 time. In fact, a lot of cars now have launch control and that meters out the exact torque to go to the wheels. It measures the amount of grip that is there and it gives you the best possible launch, which is great. It is great for getting to 100. But for us enthusiasts to get involved with the car, a manual is definitely more involving. So how to launch? Well, before that, a couple of housekeeping rules. Switch on your car. You obviously need the car to be turned on switch off your air conditioner. So what I do is I turn the AC nice and cold on full blast and then just switch off the compressor. So the blower is still putting out a little cold air while you are stationary. Switch off the ESP or traction control, whatever you have. Obviously you will get wheel spin, but you want a little bit of wheel spin. You don't want the car to get bogged down at the start. Get into a nice driving position, not too far back, not too close to the steering wheel. I like to take my seat nice and low so that I'm sitting within the car, not on top of it. And then you bring the seat close to the steering wheel so that you have a nice bend in your arm. You also have a good reach to the gear lever. And then the question is, what revs should you hold? Now, in the past, with naturally aspirated cars, you held it almost at max revs because those engines made torque at a very high RPM. So you were screaming the engine, you would launch it, you would have a lot of wheel spin, but that was required because otherwise the engine would fall out of its torque curve. Now, with turbocharged engines like the XUV300, this turbo spot, it makes a lot of low down grunt. In fact, peak torque is at 1500 RPM and stays flat to 3750 RPM. You got your handbrake. Now, what I suggest is that you keep the button pressed and keep the handbrake up. This prevents the car from rolling back. You don't want to be sat at the drag strip and your car rolling back. That does not look very elegant. So you're in first, your handbrake is up so you can release the brake. Your left foot, dip the clutch, right, rev it. I'm at 3,500 RPM. Look straight ahead, always look straight ahead and then launch. Minimal wheel spin. 
first to second. Two things that you must remember when launching a car is how much wheel spin and also about the clutch, basically taking care of the clutch. What we are doing is we are slipping the clutch, not too much, but you obviously will have to slip the clutch to get the right amount of wheel spin. When you have wheel spin, your tires actually grip into the tarmac. In fact, when you do this very often at the same patch of tarmac, you will not only lay black strips of rubber, but you'll also dig up the tarmac. So make sure that you keep shifting your position and your location. Otherwise, you'll just dig up that one patch. So when the tires dig into the tarmac, that's when you get grip. When you have your traction control on, when it senses the loss of traction, when the tires are spinning, it'll cut out power and that will reduce and drop your zero to 100 time. Traction control switched off. First, handbrake up, rev it to 4,000 RPM, look straight ahead and then go. That's how you launch a car. So shifting gears, how do you save time in the gear shift? Let's sh demonstrate that. Again, the launch, 4,000 RPM, launch, get a right amount of wheel spin. At 5,500 RPM, you shift. So what I'm doing is I'm not flat shifting. Flat shifting is a technique where your foot is still on the throttle and you dip the clutch and shift. I think that is very strenuous on the car and I would not do that to a car. In fact, another technique that was used for launching a car was just sidestepping the clutch, popping the clutch. That also, your foot is flat on the accelerator. You got your clutch pressed and you just pop the clutch and launch the car. But that is very hard on a car and I would not recommend that. What I would recommend is learning how to shift really fast. So you're in first and that's how you shift. That saves you a lot of time when you're doing a 0 to 60 or a 0 to 100. In fact, when you're doing 0 to 100, say you have to shift to third. So you have two shifts, first to second, second to third. And every shift you want to save as many fractions of a second as you can. So quick with everything, but also have a bit of mechanical sympathy and these 0 to 100 times or launches do that four or five times and then give the car a break you don't want to burn the clutch the car also gets hot the car also feels the abuse so don't be abusive on the car do it four or five times and it should be fine in fact the xuv 300 it can take a significant amount of abuse for this video we've obviously had to do far more launches you can see all the tire marks out here but even after the entire day it's fine it's perfectly all right and with that out of the way let's talk to you about braking and why that is so important when you're doing braking runs you can leave the aircon on and be comfortable so first second get up to 60 and then hard on the brakes. So the point that I want to make here is that with modern cars, with ABS, with ESP, traction control, all of those electronic systems, you can stand on the brakes. Stand on the brakes, I mean, you can slam the brakes with all your might. You don't have to feather the brakes, nothing. You can just slam the brakes and that's when you get the best braking performance. The ABS or the ESP, it judges the right amount of traction that you have at the tires and gives you the best possible braking distance. Whether it is on dry tarmac, wet tarmac, concrete, wherever. ESP, ABS, it works brilliantly. So all you need to do is just slam on the brakes hard. The nose will dip, the tail will rise, but the car will remain straight and true. Even if there's a bit of gravel, the wheels will release and lock depending on the traction at hand and the car will still be pointing in a straight line. Not like in the past when the tail used to try to overtake the front, does not happen. I'll demonstrate that to you once again. So this is emergency braking. Don't be afraid to stand on the brakes. Just stand on the brakes. Everything will be fine and you will get the best possible braking distance. So shift to second. You can leave the aircon on over here. And just stand on the brakes. 
the hazards will come on to warn the cars behind you and this is the best possible braking that you can get now step two on this is threshold braking and that is where you are on the brakes but just before abs cuts it now why do you need that when you are driving on a go-kart track like this if you are standing on the brakes and the abs is coming in all the time your weight balance and all that is getting upset your car is also not on the edge of traction it is losing traction regaining traction all of that is happening what you want to do as a driver is keep it on the very edge of traction you're going into a corner you're on the brakes your nose has dipped because all the weight is now on the nose but your abs hasn't kicked in so you have all your weight here you leave the brakes slight amount which is called trail braking so your nose lifts slightly but there is still weight on the nose you turn in and that's when you get the maximum grip on your front end and the best turn in performance from your car so a good way to practice threshold braking is to brake in a straight line without the abs kicking in so i've shown you how the abs kicks in how to brake slam the brakes and get everything to work for you now what you do is you brake without the abs kicking in without the hazards coming on once you get your braking in a straight line sorted out then you can also use the gears to slow you down especially fourth to third or like now third to second so you use the brakes as well but you downshift and you also get a bit of engine braking and that improves your braking performance and braking efficiency that's something important to learn especially in a car with a manual gearbox and then the other important skill to learn while downshifting is heel and toe basically rev matching so here's the technique to heel toe downshifting you're accelerating you're getting to the corner you brake hard blip the throttle turn in again on the brakes second to first so third to second second to first the technique when i'm braking my foot is not straight it is at a slight angle so the forward part of my foot the top of my foot is over the brakes is braking the remaining is hovering over the accelerator so i brake hard downshift while i'm downshifting so while i'm going from third to second with the remainder of my foot i blip the throttle and that gives a spike in revs so the revs go up to say 2 and a half 3000 rpm and before the revs drop i've also released my clutch so the revs have smoothened out when i release the clutch the revs would obviously be around 3000 rpm but i've already blipped the throttle gone up to 3000 rpm so i release the clutch and the revs are at 3000 rpm what that does is it smoothens out the shift so it doesn't give you a jerk this is something that you can use it on the road while you're driving around a hilly road when you downshift your passengers will not have that head toss they will not feel uneasy so the downshifts will be really smooth they probably won't even know that you've downshifted except when they listen to the engine so that smoothens out the downshift it also saves the life of your transmission components in racing in rallying we all use heel toe because you want to save the gearbox you don't want to break the gearbox you don't want to come down hard on the gearbox smash the gears so that's something that we use now obviously electronics are there to rev match and all of that but this is a skill that every keen driver should master now comes the fun part how to use the handbrake for the handbrake turn there are a couple of things to remember first is if you're taking say a right-handed u turn a right-handed handbrake turn you want your right hand on the left side of the steering wheel that means you will get better leverage so you're turning the steering wheel and then you're pulling the handbrake now always remember don't pull the handbrake when you are in a straight line start turning the steering wheel when you got half a turn of the steering wheel that's when you pull the handbrake because you want the car to get a bit unsettled and then when the tail is a little light you pull the handbrake the rear wheels will lock and that will give you that momentum to slide around the corner so looking in a straight line you turn pull the handbrake okay a fraction of a second after turning the steering wheel you pull the handbrake your tail gets locked it turns and then as you are more or less pointing in a straight line you get back on the gas and then use the traction from the front wheels to pull you out of the handbrake turn so now to do the three point turn your right hand on the left side of the steering wheel go in and swing the car around 
obviously keep it into first gear so that you can launch out of the corner. So now you didn't have to do all that circus and do the three-pointer turn. You just pull the handbrake, it locks the rear wheels and the car just slides around the corner. The Jackie Chan move. It's not something you use on the road, but it is a good skill to learn. Of course, too much speed and then that momentum will take you into the tyre barrier. So you have to judge your speed properly. In general, around 40 km per hour is a sweet spot for a handbrake turn. And now you must be wondering, what is this doing out here? <laughs> well, this is a hydraulic handbrake. This obviously is not a stock part. This is a part that we fit afterwards. And that we are going to use for the next two tutorials, which is how to drift and how to drift on dirt. That's it for part one in season two of the Thrill of Driving video tutorial series. In this video, we've taught you with the Mahindra XUV300 with the manual transmission, how to launch the car, how to get the best acceleration time, how to brake, how to threshold brake. Now, coming up in the second part in the series, we're going to teach you how to drift the car. Stay tuned for that video and thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, obviously, give us a thumbs up, share this video with like-minded enthusiasts and stay subscribed. We have far more coming up on this series.